You've seen their highs. You have seen their lows. Now see them for who they are as the front row seat brings you up close and personal with star athletes. On today's episode, we have Singapore's first professional boxing world champion when he won the UBO World Super Featherweight title in May 2017. The World Boxing Council even ranked him 25th in the world at featherweight last year. But after a terrible start to the year in and out of the ring, Mohammad, the chosen one Ridwan, is now picking up the pieces for a big comeback in his career. Really excited to have Muhammad, the chosen one, Ridwan, on the front row seat. And I was looking at doing some research on you prior to you coming on the show. And I was going through the social media channels, mm -hmm. going through Instagram. Couldn't find you. And I know you were on Instagram. So what's the story there? Um, I don't know. I think after, after, after so many things were happening, so I decided to take myself out of Instagram at least. And it gave me a little bit more peace. And I'm enjoying it. And right now, I'm just using Legends Fight Sport Instagram page to, I mean, to promote my fights, to share updates about me. And at the end of the day, that's what I want. That's what I want the business to be about. I mean, to get the people to watch me and also to know more about the gym. I think your year has been very well documented by mm -hmm. the media. But if you could describe it in one word, what would it be? Um, it's eye-opening. One word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's eye-opening. I get to see. Uh, I get to learn a lot of a lot of things from. I can I get to see how people are like when they get what they want or when they don't get what they want. Um, the the other side of the sport. I mean, you know, professional boxing is entertainment. It's also business and it's also boxing. So there's always a mix of everything, and to balance that as an athlete, I think it's a I think it's a different kind of challenge. And then of course with promoters, uh, event organizers, it's, that's another that's another ball game. So. Um, I think I think I get to learn a lot of things. I think it's meant for me to to go through what I did and to make me uh, a better ball, a better boxer, a better person. I think. Look, we don't really want to dwell on all the negatives you've had this year, but let's just say that you and Scott O'Farrell happen to be in a dark alley with no one watching. What would happen during that scenario? Uh, I think I would be like Joker, <laughs> in the in, like in the, the Joker in the movie. So. Scott's going down, but you know I still respect him. I mean, he did what he did um, as a businessman. I I understand what why he's not doing this anymore, and he managed to run away for for his own reasons. And wh whatever it is, whatever money that is owed to me or a lot of other people, if it helps him sleep at night, then it's good for him. And going through all that, the turmoil, it must have been so easy for you to just call it there and call it quits. But why didn't you? Uh, one one thing I think I got into the sport is because I love it. I love the sport. I mean, more than just about the money, the, the attention, the fame, uh, and all of that. So, no matter what happens outside, I still I know that I love the sport, and I know that I can do so much more, and I still have potential to be better. Um, that's why it didn't like, came across my mind to you know just quit just because somebody somebody give, didn't give me the right to. To, to excel or they didn't pay me my dues. So the only, the only way for me to move forward is to just, it's just naturally to fight on. Now you're doing well in terms of your boxing, trying to get back up again. Also doing well as a businessman, running Legends Fight Sport. And this was, there was this great story that I came across, Danisha Mati, who came into your gym when the very first opened mm -hmm. and now going to the SEA Games. Can you tell us a little bit more about her and the whole story? I remember when the gym first opened, there's this Indian girl, Danisha. She came with her cousin, I think, or a friend to, to check out the gym. The gym that time was so small, it's cramped, it looks a little bit dodgy. Uh, she, she was inquiring about the classes, about the fees. And I wasn't sure that she was going to sign up, but eventually she did, maybe because of my sales tactic. Or for some reason, she just find it uh, affordable for a student to, to train at Legends. And she started to show up every morning, 6.30 a.m. She's, she's going to be there for the class. Uh, she and her little skateboard or long or short board, they call it. So she'll be waiting for the gym to open. Then she will do the classes. Sometimes she gets bullied during the partner work. Um, 
she's very soft. She's very demure. She doesn't talk at all to me. So, but it was clear that she had potential. She, uh, she can move. Maybe because she did netball before, uh, she did sports before, so it wasn't a bit too awkward for her. And while I see that, that she has potential, I never told her. I never went on my way to say that you know what you should try to compete seriously or anything like that. It's not that I don't intend to train somebody to compete seriously in the sport, but I think it's just, um, I mean, the people who came to me to get guidance, to, to coach, to, to learn boxing, they eventually left. So after a while, I got quite tired of it because everybody wants to be the champion, but nobody wants to train like a champion. So, uh, but then Danisha started to compete for fun. Then she started winning a lot. And then I think she realized she's pretty good at it herself without me telling her. And so she takes training more seriously. At the point of time, we had to go against the number one in Singapore, Leona. Um, so we tried very hard to, to fight with Leona. We lost the first match. I think we lost the second one also. And then the third one, we won. And there was a huge, there, there was a huge turning point. And then they are now friends. They are now friends and they are both going to the SEA Games. So I'm really happy for them. I know you take a lot of pride in your own personal work as a boxer, but does this rank high up as well in terms of your business reaping uh, the rewards? I think um, it's just a bonus. I mean, other than having the gym to put food on the table, it's also about um, the gym is way I give back to the, to the people, to the community. It's how I reach to a bigger audience. Maybe like I want to do something good and I get people to come together and join into, to make into, to join the effort to, to reach out to more people and also to create more boxes like Danisha. So it's, it's, I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm very proud of her. Um, um, I just wish that she will just continue to box, not because of any other pressure, not just because of the opportunity to represent the country, but it makes her happy. Speaking of her and her competing at the SEA Games, you're also up. Uh, for a fight very soon. Tell us more about that. Um, so I have a fight um, in the end of October against a Thai opponent. I don't know much about him. No videos of him. I just got offered that fight. I, I mean, I asked for a tough Thai opponent, but that's the best that's willing to fight me at the at the price that that I am able to offer. So I just want to take one fight at a time. I'm not overlooking him. And the more, more importantly, outside the, the ring, I think it's where me and Coach Alex, the big Russian guy based in KL, uh, we, this is where we learn to gel together to see that whatever we are training is working in a real fight. Tell me more about uh, Alex, uh, your new coach. How have you adapted to each other? Uh, the first thing is uh, how I met him is, I mean, I've always seen him in Singapore because he was coaching Kang Fai and Mirage. Mm. Uh, so, one day, one of the one of my friends said, "You know what? You should try to train under Alex." At first, I was quite hesitant because I wasn't sure that he know he might know what he's doing, so I didn't give it a go. But then uh, I had a fight in Philippines, which I which I lost. But in the, for that fight, Alex was there as a spectator, and I didn't have a coach back. Uh, I didn't have a coach then. I was training on my own. Uh, I flew to Philippines on my own, so I really had no cornerman. So what the, the staff did was well, they asked Alex for a favor and Alex, without asking for any pay or for any favors, he said, yeah, why not? Even though he didn't train me. So he was in the corner. Um, we lost that fight. But I mean, that showed a lot about Alex that he was willing to, to do that for me. And I decided to give it a go, go to KL, train two weeks with him. And I, I regretted not going to him earlier. You have a very interesting sales tactic for this upcoming fight. People usually go to a, a website or perhaps, you know, fill in a form. But for you, you're encouraging people to contact you on WhatsApp for tickets. Mm. W what's behind that idea? I mean, it's, it's very hard to sell tickets. Uh, I mean, to be honest, as much as organizers, promoters saying like the event is sold out. So it's, it's, it's really a struggle to get out there. I mean, as an athlete, as a professional boxer, you don't only fight in the ring. You have to go out there and make yourself known. Uh, you have to talk a lot, you have to, you need to have, you need your social media account to be very active. And I take pride in going out and selling tickets for my own fight because I want to make sure that uh, the people can reach out to me and also the best way for them to buy a ticket if they're lazy to come down to the gym to get a ticket, they can just WhatsApp me, pay now, then I just reserve the tickets and they can get them at the door. And it's also a way of me communicating with them. Sometimes they communicate with me a bit too much, like, <laughs> Weird, weird stuff, uh, but most of them are nice. 
like sometimes they will invite me to their personal events at birthday parties. Some people want from Perth or Australia or UK will message me, hey, I'm reading about your fight. So it's quite interesting that news can travel so far. So I think that's the power of social media nowadays. But have you got like any trolls now that your your number is out there? Mm. Just people just texting you random stuff. Um, before on Instagram, when I was still active on Instagram, people was there were a lot of people giving me advice on how I should run my career, like what I should not do, what I should do, I should stop trash talking. Uh, that they said they know me since long time ago, and I said I wanted to retire, and that's a that's a sign that I wanted to give up. But the thing is, these people don't know what they are talking about. A lot of things, a lot of times, they just they just watch. They probably watch wrestling or something. And they feel like they know how the boxing world runs. So I just let them be, and it's quite it's quite annoying. But just at least they are watching, you know. I'm talking about people watching you, what needs to happen now with all eyes on you again as you try to rise up from what ha- what has happened over the course of this year? What needs for you to happen for you to? hit those targets that you have yet to achieve? I think as a fighter, I need to fight. I need to stay active. And that's why I'm fighting about, uh, since whatever happened before, I think I've gotten about uh, offers to fight four fights. And I got two more fights to end 2019. And the goal is to to maintain my ranking and hopefully get the offers from the big guys, from the big promoters to go uh, and fight the big fights. But I also realised that I will be most likely be the stepping stone, stepping stone for someone else, and I just have to make sure I have to be very, very prepared because the the big fights are coming. I've already been offered to fight good boxers with really, really good records, and um, but I have to put that on hold first because I need to stabilize everything, my training camp, I need to get the funding, and uh, right now I'm just self-funded, uh, and also I have my sponsor from Westlake, Westlake Tires. They're helping me out a lot. Um, other than that. I need the big fights. I need to fight. I need to be. The, I can be the underdog, but as long as I'm given a fair chance to showcase my skills and to train at my best, and then I, I think it should be alright. And finally, you. I've known you since you you did the Sea Games mm. uh, back in 2015 when we did our very first interview. Back then, um, you won three bronze medals over the course of your amateur career mm. in boxing at the Sea Games. Miss it. Um, I quite I quite miss the I quite miss being an amateur boxer because you you box totally just for the country. You don't have no pressure in selling tickets. You don't have to trash talk. You don't have you basically you can just you can just fight and enjoy and enjoy boxing. But amateur boxing and professional boxing are two totally different sports. Even though they involve punching each other in the face, one is three rounds, one is twelve rounds. And I also miss the the friendship. Uh, I mean you know you travel with a team. You lose, you you one week, uh, you free for one week, and at least if if your teammate loses, which hopefully that don't, don't happen, but it does. So I mean, you both can just enjoy the food together. Right now, like pro, you're more on your own, you and your coach, but mostly you're on your own. So I miss I miss that I miss that friendship, I miss that bonding with with my teammates. Well, we right now have been hearing my questions to Muhammad the Chosen One, Red One, but coming up after the break in a segment called Team Talk he will hear and get questions from people that you would kind of recognize. We'll see you after the break. Thanks for keeping it with us on the front row seat and my special guest, Muhammad, the chosen one, Ridwan. I asked the questions a little earlier on. I'm not the best interviewer in the world, but let's get some questions from some interesting faces. Let's get the first one on. Right. Okay, Ridwan, what do you usually do during your free time? Uh, okay, I know, I know her. Um, I don't have a lot of free time. But those times when I have in the bus or in the train, on the way to training or wherever else, I think I like to read, not like books, but like manga, like Japanese comics. So, I mean, that's what I like to do. Is that something that you've brought through from, from very young, from a young age? No, I started late actually. <laughs> yeah, so somebody introduced it to me and I just got hooked to a few, a few, different, a few different titles. And I just read it because it's fun and um, it's creative and also somehow it teaches some life experiences through this comic. So. 
what do you wish you could do if you had more time? If I had more time, I haven't really thought about it because I, and I only just pack with training, training other people, work. So I didn't really have time about it. But I don't know travel maybe. When was the last holiday? And where did you go? A proper holiday, not like a a, a boxing trip. None. I can remember. I can remember the last one. I think sponsors need to come out here yep. and give Ridwan a trip of a lifetime. Yes. Every time I go overseas, it's about me not having, not being able to eat because I have to go for the weigh-ins or because it's a training camp or I have to worry about somebody going to punch me in the face like five days from now. So never a proper holiday, not yet. All right, next question. Okay, the chosen one, Ridwan. I know you're a champion and all and you're used to winning, but my important question to you is what is it like to always lose to me on FIFA? How does it feel? <laughs> You know how crickets always make a lot of noise? <laughs> you know how crickets always make a lot of noise? They like, they, they chirp all day, but when you walk past them, they just stay quiet. So this is like one of the examples. So if you want more stories, I can tell you, but other than that, I will be nice for now, since I borrowed this top from him. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's like fee playing FIFA, a big thing uh, around the gym? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we discussed business, we, we got close, all because of FIFA. I mean, uh, I think he he definitely finds that One Play Sport is a, is a nice platform for him to showcase his wins. But to keep the story short, before my fight, I went to his house, beat him on FIFA, three matches in a row. Guess he didn't want to say that on, <laughs> on camera. Interesting. Next one. So I really want two questions from you. First, what are you going to do when you retire from boxing? And second one, what's your little combination to put someone down? I think let's start with the little combination first. What's your favorite? What's your little combination to bring someone down? I mean, uh, I love throwing shots to the body because uh, when, when it hits the right spot, they will go down and they will have to think again on their own whether they want to get back up. I mean, if I hit them on the jaw, it's nice. It's a nice knockout, but they will just be knocked out cold. So the body shot will make them realize, oh, I, is it I stay down if I get get up and get hit again? So I think my my favorite combinations will be to the body. And your plans for after boxing? Um, never really thought about it because I think if I think about it too much, I think I would naturally go towards that direction. They say like if you want to take over an island, you burn the boat. So whatever it is, you have to make it. You have to capture the island. If not, you got nowhere else. I think I, I bring the same concept to my boxing career. I mean, I do have um, like uh, like the gym, not to fall back to, but to help support whatever that I want to do. Do you have a time frame in line of when you would call it a day? No idea yet, but I think I have a few friends around me that I trust that will tell me in the face that if I'm if I'm slowing down, or if I'm getting hit too much, I think they will come and say, you know, Ridon, it's time to hang it up. But whether I want to listen or not, <laughs> I think it's another story because I think I already have a lot of people telling me that I should retire. But, you know, they don't know anything yet. They don't know, they don't see me waking up at 4 a.m. to go for my runs. They don't see how hard I work. So I don't think they have the right to say what I should do yet. 4 a.m., what, what is a typical day like for you? Um, I run at 4, 4.30 a.m. Uh, that's where I get time on my own, time to be myself, my own thoughts. Then... Um, I leave home by maybe 5.30, 6, go to the gym, train, or I start my work and my day ends by about 10. So pretty much that's how my day is. That is tough. All right, next question. Why are you so strong? When I grow up, I want to be like you. Oh, that's nice. Why are you so strong? I think he's forced to ask this question. <laughs> I am strong because um, I think I work hard and I think it's not just about me. I think it's also about having a great team that gives me the motivation to, you know, to be a, a better person, to be a better boxer in the ring. Um, I can box really well, but if I don't have the right support system, I don't think I can be doing what I'm doing now. So I'm really lucky. So for those, uh, I think for those who wants to see me lose, I think that's motivation and those who want to support me all the way to the end, it's also, it's also strong motivation. So uh, it keeps me strong, keeps me 
uh, it strengthens my willpower. So I think that's those are the main things that keeps me strong physically, mentally, emotionally. On top of your of your normal training, uh, do you do anything extra to maybe give you that that extra edge in terms of maybe making you that split second faster or anything like that? I think uh, I think trainings are pretty much about the same as any other boxer. It's about how hard they work. It's about having the discipline. Like for me, uh, waking up early in the morning or having to run late at night is like it's like the anchor that I go back to where I tell myself that I work harder than somebody else. I think that uh, I mean everybody can have dreams. Any anybody can be the next big thing. Everybody have the better idea. Any anybody can can be the next superstar. But at the end of the day, you need to have something to fall back on and to know that I wake up early in the mornings or late at night after work, even though I'm tired, I think that's that's the thing that keeps me strong in my mind. Do we have time for, for one more? Yeah, one more? Okay, let's have one more. Okay, here's a quick question for Ridwan. If you can have a ticket to go anywhere on Earth, where would it be? Well, given the time that you can take time off, from work and go anywhere in, uh, around the world, anywhere. Or out of space, if you want. Probably out of space, to outer space. I think that's better because getting away from people for a while. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, I prefer, I prefer backpacking. So maybe just backpacking around, I don't know, anywhere. I think anywhere else would be nice. What's like one country? I'm sure that you have this one country that you would love to go and spend time in and maybe a couple of weeks or as you say backpacking is there one particular country in asia in europe maybe in america what's the furthest country <laughs> i'll go to that one antarctica yeah okay <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> you just want to get away from yeah it just get away yeah okay next up we have a special games segment with ridwan and you know in press conferences mm -hmm. and in uh, weigh-ins you have this, this showdown and the face off with someone yeah the straight face i'm going to get that with you after the break All right, let's have a little bit of fun with Muhammad, the chosen one, Red One. We got a little bit serious earlier on, but now it's time for the face-off and in a game called You Laugh, You Lose. I've got an app on my phone. It's dead jokes and we will do a, a stare down, a face-off. I think 10 jokes each and uh, whoever laughs the most loses. So I'll go first. You know how it works, right? Yep. All right, so let's go with the first joke. What do you call an exploding duck? A fire quacker. No reaction. I need a one, huh? No, because all a bit we had to understand. <laughs> Why did the coffee file a police report? It got marked. Not bad. Boxer Not to bad. be, eh? Not bad. What happened to the Prox car when it broke down? It got towed away. Okay, but I will just say it. Huh? What do you call a fat psychic? A fortune teller. <laughs> I okay, got it because you laughed. So you both laughed. <laughs> what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. What did Daddy Spider say to Baby Spider? You spend too much time on the web. Not even close. I 
I used to work at a shoe recycling shop, but I had to quit. It was destroying my soul. Hmm. Lip. <laughs> it's dad jokes. You can see people behind the scenes laughing at it though. A furniture store keeps calling me. All I wanted was one night stand. <laughs> bad. What kind of price did the person who created the door knocker win? A Nobel Prize. Hmm. Oh, this is good. I'm going to go stand outside. If anyone is looking for me, tell them I'm outstanding. Okay, last two. What do you call the new innovations in knife technology, cutting edge technology. <coughs> Nothing at all from you, man. All right, last one. Do we know the score yet? Three one, three one, three one. Yeah, of course. Three one. Do you know sign language? You should learn it. It's pretty. <laughs> you should learn it. It's pretty handy. Okay, I think he's won this hands down, so no problem with that. Thanks so much for joining us on no the problem. show. Thanks but finally, me. before we go, for those watching and those who want to become uh, a boxer Ooh. in the future and who have ambitions to be a world champion like you, what would be your advice to them? The first advice is to come train at Legends. The second advice is you got to love what you do because there's going to be a lot of trials, tests, and it's going to be easy for you to quit if you don't love what you do. So. For you to go all the way, you need to love training, you need to love boxing, you need to love competing. So, if you really love it, then come find us. Thanks so much for coming on the show and good luck for your fight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. This has been The Front Row Seat.